The International Day of Education on 24th January 2020 is a day proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly to honor education and its centrality to human well-being and sustainable development. So when the 2020 celebration will position education and the learning it enables as humanity's greatest renewable resource. It will reaffirm the role of education as a fundamental right, a public good and an enabler of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It will frame inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning for all as a goal in and of itself as well as a necessary means. The 2020 theme is Learning for People, Planet, Prosperity and Peace. Now, to share some more light on this, I've been joined in the studio by an educational consultant and the executive chairman of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition, Kofi Asari. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What would be your assessment of our public education system? Good so far? I think in line with the education, um, the International Education Day 2020, Ghana has made significant strides in improving access to pre-basic, basic, basic uh, secondary education, which are key among the SDG force on education. Mm. Um, about 95% of Ghanaian children of school in age are in school at the basic level. Um, and also at the secondary level, about 80% of those who sit for the BEC are now able to transit into senior high school. And so these two are modest gains aimed at ensuring that excluded people who pre previously couldn't access education on the basis of cost and other factors mm. um, are now on board. Right. However, in terms of access, there are still challenges, especially at the pre-basic level. For mm. instance, we know that between age two and three, education is strip more or less privatized. All creches and early childhood development centers exactly. are privately owned. And so low-income people are unable to have the resources to participate in that process. And that is a worry um, um, for us. Interesting you mentioned the private sector, you know, at the preschool level. What is it that makes the private sector, as far as education is concerned, better than the public? Is it the attention to details? Is it availability of, availability of resources? What is it really? Yeah, the public... Um, the, the, the dichotomy in quality between public and private education in Ghana um, has been established on the basis of one, the quality of management systems in place. Bear in mind that the private school owner is a profit-making entrepreneur whose profit is based on the number of students they're able to, um, to admit. <coughs> now, the number of students they're able to admit or attract depends on the quality of learning outcomes the school is supposed to produce. And so private-making entrepreneurs who are proprietors of private schools are more concerned about ensuring that their students pass and pass well so that they, their school becomes more marketable, they make right. more profit. And so their management systems are quite stringent mm. um, compared to the public system where um, the teacher uh, will get paid even if everybody fails, right? right. The district director will still be opposed even if everybody fails. And so the management systems are different. One is learning outcome based or more accountable management systems that are pro-learning outcomes. And mm. the other is a system where if you like people get paid not because of the quality of learning outcomes, right. but because of maybe the input level or showing up in the classroom or showing up at work. Apart from that, I need to hammer on this point that the attitude of parents differs. The average attitude of a parent who is investing by paying school fees at a pri in a private school uh -huh. is different. They are more careful and more interested in how their children learn after school. Right. And then, and more particularly meticulous about uh, um, um, school um, tests and then um, homework and all and that. And that's because, uh, because of they how much paid. they're paying? Yeah, they have paid money, so okay. there's an investment. But the attitude of the average, and this is backed by research mm. that was conducted in the in the second Takradi area. But the attitude of the average parent whose child attends a free public school is quite despondent. The response to that parent to ensuring that the children take their homework seriously, they are taking their lessons seriously, going to school to supervise or ensure and engage with the teachers to be sure that their kids are doing well in school and all that, is quite limited. It is nowhere near the, the quality of engagement that parents in private schools would have with their schools about their awards performance. And so mm. it is a, 
it's a mixed bag of both home factors and then also school factors culminating in the quality um, differences. The secret supervisors, they have a responsibility to supervise, you know, education at the basic level. Do you think they have done, um, so far, they have done fairly well at what they're supposed to do? You mentioned, you know, attitudes of parents. Is this also something that secret supervisors should intervene and have dialogue with the parents from time to time? Do you think that would help? There are two issues with the work of the secret supervisors. The coalition sees the CS, commonly referred to as CS, as pivotal in ensuring immediate um, external oversight, you know, in teaching. The headmaster is the direct supervisor, but the next layer is the circuit supervisor. An external, quiz external because he comes from the district education office. Okay. Now, the challenge is this. Circuit supervisors are ill-equipped. And so, on average, uh, um, the number of schools each person supervises about 15 schools mm. in a circuit. And so, if you don't have a motorbike fully fueled, you know, you will not be able to visit these schools twice in even a month. Right. And so it makes it difficult for you to actually get a fair idea about what actually takes place in school, especially when you have to go on and on, it's difficult. The second issue is about what is done with the report of the circuit supervisor. Now, we don't have systems that ensures that the reports that circuit supervisor generates feed into policy decision making on education at the, at the local level mm -hmm. and so for instance if we had systems that ensured that the circuit supervisor's opinion on teacher A would inform to a higher extent whether that child would get promotion or not then you have something more of a resource based uh, management systems regulating your HR but promotions are more or less automatic. Once you are four years or so, and then your headmaster says that oh, you have been coming to school, right. you, you go for an interview and then you, you are told nice and test, and you go. And so if we have systems that give premium to the op technical opinions of circuit supervisors, supervisors, to the extent that it informs the level of promotions or how early you can get a promotion, mm. I think that um, the, the role of circuit supervisor will be more taken more seriously, and for that matter, teachers will be much more um, on their guard when right. they are actually in the classroom delivering teaching and learning. Uh, government has announced um, that it would privatize basic education. Do you think that's the way to go? I am not aware of um, the, the context for that particular statement. Mm. Um, previously, there were discussions about around um, trying to get... But you have said earlier, you compare the two at the basic level, yeah, and you yeah, find yeah, that the private yeah. um, basic... Now, I'm talking about the, the issue of government's decision. Right. Previously, there were discussions about um, considering the option of engaging non-state actors to support the management of low-performing schools as a way of trying to bring the best practices or best lessons available in the private sector to bear within the public sector. Right. But we, we, we reach consensus with government that that approach is not the best mm. because um, there are two different terrains with two different resources. And Absolutely. that if government wanted to revamp the quality of education at the public sector, right. the best thing to do is that you resource the public sector same way the private sector is resourced, is resourced so that you can have a basis to expect more quality Absolutely. from teachers and learning outcomes. Kofi Asari is an educational consultant and the executive chairman of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition.